Megan Fraser McGrogan, the Executive Director of the Greater Utica Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of our Leveling Up podcast. If you're just tuning in for the first time, we have lots of past episodes on our website, greateruticachamber.org. We hope that you'll go check those out. We've recorded over 50 podcasts since the pandemic started hitting our area. And these are great shorter episodes to make sure that you know everything that's going on with our area businesses and organizations. It's a great way to stay in touch. And more importantly, you'll get to know how you can support them during this time. The chamber is very dedicated to making sure the community is connected to all these businesses and organizations. And we make sure that we're supporting them so they stay open and stay doing well. So please go check those out on the website. If you'd like to listen to the podcast version, I'd also encourage you to go check it out by searching Leveling Up with Megan McGrogan. You can search that wherever you get podcasts, Apple, Google Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, Spotify, and please subscribe. That way you're in the know. Whenever we get a new episode, it'll get notified right to your phone. And you know you can turn me on and, and listen to our guests while you're cooking dinner or doing some chores. Great way to pass some time. Uh, maybe you're going for a drive or something. And again, you can just stay in touch with these businesses and organizations. Uh, there's some great content on there. So please go check that out. Uh, so today we have a really cool uh, format for our show. So what we're doing from now until an event that we're hosting in December, we are featuring all of our finalists for our 2020 Business of the Year Awards. So the actual awards are going to air as a one-hour television special on Tuesday, December 15th from 7 to 8 p.m. on CBS Utica. If you don't have cable, don't worry about it because you will be able to get the show online. Uh, but please mark your calendars for that date because at that event, we are going to have this one hour special featuring our 15 finalists and ultimately unveiling our winners in each category. So you'll definitely want to tune in for that. And like I said, from now until the 15th, we're featuring each one of these finalists on the Leveling Up podcast. So you'll definitely want to go check out all those other episodes as well so you can get to know them and why we're celebrating them and all of their accomplishments. So today, again, I have with me one of those finalists. I'm so excited to welcome Diane Stancato, the Executive Director of the YWCA of the Mohawk Valley. Diane, thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you, Megan. We're honored and excited about this, and I'm, I'm happy to be here today. Yeah, and congratulations, I should say, by starting out with that. Um, Thank you. A finalist in our not-for-profit over 50 employees category. Um, it's a, a great category. And again, we have five of these categories for those of you who are listening who might not be familiar with the award. So uh, congratulations to you and the why. Thank you. As I said, we're, we're all very uh, honored and um, have really enjoyed uh, thinking about to, uh, talking with you today and all of the festivities that will come between now and December 15th. So it's yeah. great. Thank you. So um, Diane, tell us again, what's your position and your role at the Y? And then I assume everybody in the community has heard of the Y, but just in case, <laughs> um, give us the whole overview, soup to nuts. What do you guys do for the community? How do you support the community? What services do you have? Kind of your overall uh, overview of the YWCA. Well, that is a, a lot right there. So uh, how long did you say we had two hours? Oh, no. So 20 minutes. So uh, yes, I, again, Diane Stancato, I'm the CEO of the YWCA Mohawk Valley. And what I do there is uh, I'm in, uh, my function is that I run the business. So uh, I lead a staff of 50 um, and we have um, a multitude of services. Uh, but the most important thing that I would want people to know is that we are the experts in the Mohawk Valley on domestics and sexual violence crisis services. So the staff are tra highly trained and that is, the, that is really the meat of what we do. Um, and, and then of course our mission, which is the YWCA Mohawk Valley is on a mission to eliminate racism, empower women, and promote peace, justice, dignity, and freedom for all. So um, really excited about that. Um, it's freedom and dignity for all, but, uh, but very excited about that and, um, and that you're on this mission with us. So yeah. uh, thank you. Absolutely. And we uh, are so excited to recognize you guys for this. Um, you know, one of the things that I think, you know, a lot of people throughout this whole time have, have realized is how important our area organizations are to the community. You know, we hope that everybody realizes that all the time, but 
whenever there's, I think, a, a kind of scenario where we're all under pressure, then we really realize how important these organizations are. So talk about how you guys are doing and how how has like the whole climate since the beginning of the year affected the organization and, and what kind of work have you guys been doing? Well, we've been busier than ever, uh, Megan. The pandemic and the lockdown um, has uh, stressed otherwise uh, maybe not good relationships. Uh, so uh, we have been increasingly busy. Um, when it first when it first started and we first locked down, it was it was a little quiet for a couple of weeks. And, and then it really started to build from there. So um, in the last six months, we have seen an increase in demand for our services of 30%, and we are trending to be up 50% in, in uh, requests for services, over 1,300 new DV clients um, just since March. So those are really um, staggering numbers, and, uh, and yet we have managed it. Uh, the staff have been working around the clock like we always do, and we have been able to help every single person that has come to us. So I'm very proud of that. Yeah, I mean, 1,300, when you think about how many people, you know, you might know as an individual in the community, that is a staggering number. It certainly is. And I'm just talking about Oneida County. Wow. So those are big numbers. Now that is new clients. We also have existing clients that we help. So, uh, so it's, it's been uh, an overwhelming time for us. Um, and amazingly, um, we, we were there and we were able to help and we stayed well and, you know, there, there's grace in that. So we're really, really happy about that. Yeah. Now, have you guys been operating, are you in the office or are you operating remotely? Like, how does that work with all of your volunteers and, and everything? We've had a real hybrid of it. So we've had um, uh, the, the main office is, is locked, um, but it's always locked because of uh, the security. But, uh, but the main office is really staggered remote working. So um, uh, that's what we've been trying to do to keep that density down because we have a lot of people in the main office. And then, of course, frontline staff, they've been right out there. Uh, they've been doing what they do in the shelters, the case managers meeting with people. Um, taking all the precautions. And as I said, thankfully and gracefully, we've been safe and well. Um, and our advocates in the courts, they were working with the judges and the court, and the court, uh, court personnel um, on Skype and Zoom and whatever until the courts were opened up again. So uh, police stations, we were helping there. Um, we have offices and all of those. So the frontline staff just didn't even miss a beat. I am so proud of them. Yeah. Um, okay, so speaking of proud, that kind of segues into our into my <laughs> oh, next good. question for you. Um, so I, I think, you know, it, it's hard to not focus on the pandemic's impact and what you're proud of, you know, getting through all of that. But, you know, it doesn't have to be focused on that. But I guess what in general are you proud of uh, for the YWCA? It doesn't have to be this year. It could just be in general. Um, but anything you'd like to share that you're proud of for the organization? Um, I am proud of... Um the staff, because they are really the heart of the YWCA. And um, every single day, they live in crisis with um, victims, and they help them go from crisis victims to survivors. And so I am really proud of them. Um, and during this year, I would say it's the fact that in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of all of that crisis, we launched a text and chat line so that uh, people in the community, it's primarily women, it's primarily gender-based, but we are, uh, we are um, gender neutral, so everybody can come to us uh, for services. But um, we launched a text and chat line uh, in June, and it's been wonderful because if you can imagine, if you are in a domestic violence situation and you're stuck at home, how are you gonna call someone? Mm -hmm. Your abuser might be right there in the next room, but you can text us and you can chat with us on, on live online. Um, and there's all kinds of secure encryption, so encry encrypting things so that um, nobody can track it. Wow. I mean, that's, yes. re that's really, really good to know. I mean, like you said, if you're, if you're in a scenario, I mean, how do you pick up the phone? I mean, it, it sometimes takes a lot to get to a spot where you can even do that. So, um, and I think too, awesome. you made a really great point, Megan, because it's, it's hard to talk about this. It's, mm -hmm. this is your life. These just, this is, there's love here. You love this person. You also probably hate them at the moment, but I mean, there's been all this stuff. You might have children together. Um, and, and it's hard to talk about it, but it might be easier to text about it. Mm -hmm. So to, yeah. to reach out to that hotline and get some help. So yeah, that uh, is, I encourage people to use it. 
That is awesome. I mean, just if you think about even personally, I mean, sometimes it's easier to have hard conversations, you know, maybe sometimes the wording doesn't translate too, too nice to the other side, but you know, in this case, you don't have to worry about that. (laughs) You have trained professionals there to help, but exactly, um, exactly. Yeah. You could totally see how that would be a a fantastic um, resource for the community. Uh, We'll make sure to put that text line uh, up as well on the screen at the end. Um, so what does it mean to you to be a finalist for the, the Business of the Year Awards? I mean, uh, again, a, a really kind of interesting time to be a community organization. This must be a little bit of a bright light in all of this. <laughs> it's been a hard year. It really has, you know, scrambling for funding and making sure that we're here and we're relevant um, and able to help. Um, what it means to us is that we have this time, that we have this time to um, to talk about our mission, to talk about the fact that we've been here for over 130 years serving women and girls in this community, um, and that we plan to continue to be here for another 130 years. And so it, it gives us a chance to highlight that, to um, share again what we do, because um, there are people who still don't know what we do, right? Mm-hmm. They, uh, even though we try to promote the, the, the fact that we are here for you, um, that it, oftentimes we get confused with other organizations mm-hmm. and, um, and or, or maybe, you know, a gym and a pool and all those things that we used to have. So, mm-hmm. um, so for us, this recognition, this, it really highlights what we do. And um, it gives us a chance also, Megan, to say thank you, say thank you to the community for everything that you do for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, the support that we have in the Mohawk Valley from this community is, is amazing. And so this is a really um, wonderful way for us to say thank you and, um, and to say thank you to whoever nominated us. So yes. we are, we are um, grateful for that and humble. Absolutely. So, uh, so that's how we feel about it. Um, and again, to highlight the mission, right? So eliminating racism, empowering women. And that's mm-hmm. what our mission is. So uh, again, thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. You know, I think that this is uh, the the podcast part of this has really allowed us to give our finalists, you know, time and space to really communicate with the community. So uh, we really hope that people utilize these as a way to understand, again, your mission, because, you know, typically when sometimes when you get into these things and, you know, you see a name being recognized and you think, well, good for them. That's cool. But you really might not understand exactly why they're being recognized. So we really hope that this uh, helps educate the whole community, not just maybe the select few that look through, you know, <laughs> all of the, uh, the information that comes in for these. Um, because by the way, I, I should mention for those listening or watching who don't understand the process. So uh, the community and, and really anybody can nominate chamber members for this award, but then it goes through a, a kind of a larger process from there where uh, Diane, you and your staff will fill out a comprehensive form and get us a bunch of information then that gets reviewed by our Publicity and Events Council and by our board of directors. So uh, there's a lot that goes from kind of A to B being nominated and and chosen. And so this allows the community to really understand what's in all that data too uh, and Mm -hmm. why we're recognizing you. So um, it's great to be able to have everybody hear that information right from you. Uh, And it's really, um, you know, I want to congratulate the other finalists. And um, it, because I know that we have such great businesses and nonprofits in this community, and I want to say congratulations to them because it's an honor for all of us to be a part of this. Yeah, absolutely. And I should apologize too. I said your category wrong. You're in nonprofit under 50 employees. Under 50. I said over in the beginning. <laughs> so that was my mistake. That's um, okay. So just uh, again, Diane. So again, getting back to your services. So we talked about the text line. Um, how else can the community access your services? Like what's, what's the, the, you know, the tax line is one of them, but if somebody is interested in another program or is curious to see everything you guys have to offer, what's the best way for them to get in touch and say either I need help or I want to learn more information. So uh, the website, ywcamv.org has all information about what we do. Um, you can link there. If you're in crisis, uh, what we would tell someone is, are, are, are you safe? So if you are not feeling safe, call 911, of course. Um, and if not, you call our hotline, which is 315-797-7740. And that is also, you can also text to that line, as I said earlier. So those are the ways to come into the organization. Um, and 
as well as we have a Facebook page, YWCA Mohawk Valley. So uh, lots of information on there. Mm -hmm. So there's there's multiple ways to reach us. Um, you can always call our offices. Uh, if it's not crisis related, if you just want to, um, if you want to know more about what we do, or you want to donate, um, so they or participate in any way. So there's lots of ways to connect with us. Yeah. Now you said donate. So let's go, go to that for a second. So um, kind of getting into how the community can be supportive of you. I know it's been a particularly tough time on our nonprofit organizations because you know, we're, we're used to, we're, we have a very giving community here. We do. And we have a community that loves going to events to give. Um, and so events kind of become a very uh, reliant yeah. thing for our area organization. Sometimes I think that's unique to our area, how many nonprofits we have and how many events we have and how generous people are at those events. Um, so talk about now, how can people support you with the absence of those things? What's the best way uh, and what do you need help with from the community? You can donate online. Um, that's live. You can do that anytime. Um, we have just sent out an annual appeal. So it might be in your mailboxes as we speak. Uh, we do have our big event in April, which we have now postponed to April 21, which is Salute to Outstanding Women. We honor fabulous women in our community. 32 years doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, but that's, again, that's pushed back as, as, as many nonprofits are facing this, we're trying to navigate in a new, these new waters. Mm -hmm. um, we are always um, looking for operational support because we operate a lot of, um, a lot of programming and, um, and certainly and absolutely we have adoptive family coming up. So if you are interested, and that's something that people really like to do, and we have a lot of families in our housing programs, in our shelters, in our support groups, and in the child advocacy centers, we have a lot of children too that could that really would like to have a wonderful Christmas, I'm sure. So yeah. if you're interested in that as a person, as a company, as an individual, uh, reach out to us because we are just starting that now. Oh, that's so great. That's, that's one fun way that you can get involved. Yeah, a fun and, and turnkey way to help. Yes, you know, and maybe yes. Help people like that. Age. Yeah. Yes. And get you started uh, engaging with the organization. I think that's a great way to, to do that. I think so. And, and you know, on the flip side of that is if you understand what we do, if you uh, educate yourself in what we do, if you go on our website, you read about um, the YWC Mojave Valley, you read about domestic violence in our community um, or domestic violence or sexual assault as a whole, prevention, education, any of those things. If you become a resource, you might be able to say to someone that you love that's going through something, hey, um, I know the YWCA can help you. I know that they do this. Mm -hmm. So um, so if at the very least, if you just understand and you um, and you can share what we do, you may help save a life. That's that's the flip side. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I feel like I keep saying absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with everything you're saying. Um, you. But, you know, I think that the the biggest thing, too, on, on education, I think you hit the nail on the head. And, you know, a lot of times I think people hear of organizations and they think, well, that's really nice that they do that, but I don't need that or, or I don't know anybody who needs that. The reality is you just never will know until you're in that scenario, right? And so that I feel is why it's so important to understand what each organization does. Because like I said in the beginning, we have so many important organizations that you kind of don't know you need them until you need them, right? And then right. you're like, oh my God, where do I find help with this? And this being a topic that I think is so hard, as you said earlier, for people to talk about, it, you know, it's just nice to know that that resource is available for the community. And especially this texting, I think is huge. The chat feature is huge. Um, to just know if you have a friend or a family member or somebody that you can say, or maybe even yourself at some point, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you say, God, I never envisioned myself in this scenario, but here I am. And right, here's right. how I know where to go. And that's really important. It, it really is. And the stigma around domestic violence and, and sexual assault is being lifted. It's like, this is a real crisis. We are, we are having an epidemic and a crisis of, of domestic violence and sexual assault against women in our country, in our community, in our very own community. So for us to be aware of that and be talking about it and, and be in this together, um, that's, that's really, um, if I can get any message out there that today, that's the message that I really want people to take away, which is know what we do and, and, and talk about what we do to people who you think might need our help. Uh, because as I said, you could save a life and, um, or at least get someone to a better place. 
right? Get someone to, and that's just important for, for, it would make you feel better to be able to help. And yet, and it would certainly um, help those who need us. It says we have to rely on you and the community to do that. Yes. It's so, so important. Um, so Diane, tell us what's coming up for the Y. Any, any exciting news on the horizon or what, what does yes. the future look like? <laughs> well, uh, well, we plan to be here another 130 years. I think I already said that. Uh, but what we are so excited about is we just launched a men together last week. It is a primary prevention program for young men and boys. And it is a program that teaches boys um, about how their um, behaviors and how their uh, maybe non-healthy masculinity uh, uh, affects women and girls. And this program um, works with young men in middle school, high school, and talks about and teaches them, you know, when you cat call or, you know, what, what is healthy masculinity. And, um, and it really engages men in the solution, right? Men, men, the solution and the end of domestic violence ends with men, right? So we have to engage the wonderful, solid men in our community that are, uh, and there are thousands and hundreds of thousands of these pe of people out there that are just wonderful uh, men and, and, um, and true leaders to um, join us in this messaging about uh, a men together so we can fix this uh, in our community. Um, this is a program that was launched by WCA Tennessee, um, uh, Nashville and Middle Tennessee. Mm -hmm. They are now reaching over 700 young men. Wow. And uh, in I think over 22 schools and clubs and programs. And they just launched this, I believe two years ago. We are an early adopter yeah. and uh, we have some ambassadors already on board. Uh, you don't have to be a man to be an ambassador and you're not delivering program as an ambassador. You're just learning what this program is and you're helping us put that, push that message out, getting us into some of these sports programs and clubs. So um, we're, we're really excited about a men together because um, obvious reasons um, and you're, what are we excited about for the future? So um, um, we have the highest rate of domestic violence in New York state, other than downstate, other than wow. New York city. Mm -hmm. um, what if, what if, because of this program, because the community is getting involved with us um, in a men together, what if uh, Mohawk, Valley, Mohawk Valley becomes the safest place for women and girls in New York? What if that, right? So that's what excites me, is that can we change that paradigm of a 30% increase in domestic violence this year to a 50% de decrease later on because we have changed the paradigm and the projection of yeah. violence against women. So that's what we're excited about. That would be fantastic. And I, I love this program. I mean, that is just, it really, I got the chills when you're talking about it because that's, it's really where it all starts. Right. And especially yes. having a son myself, I mean, that is just so important. You think, you know, am I doing the right thing? Am I going to raise him? Right. You know, are, are right. we going to be you know, the parents that hit this stuff head on instead of, you know, it, it really is all, it's so important. And I really applaud you for that because I, I think that's going to be a great resource and, and program for our community. Thank you. It's something the Y has been talking about doing for years, so certainly since I got here, mm -hmm. uh, before I got here. And, um, and now we're launching. And this has been uh, a lot of work, a lot of research. Yeah. Um, and if we found the funding to get the kick this off, um, but it, we, we need people to be involved. Mm -hmm. We need the community to do this with us together. And yeah. that's the only way that we're gonna change paradigm. That's the only way. Yeah. So, uh, so that's what we're um, all hyped up about at the moment. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, Diane, anything else that you wanna tell the community about before we wrap things up and we'll tell everybody again how to get in touch? Sure, um, well, I'd like to thank um, the chamber and again, those who nominated us and those who uh, moved us forward uh, on behalf of the staff and the board, we are uh, so honored and grateful for the opportunity to share our message, to share our mission with all of you. And, um, and we you know, get involved with us and we need your help, your support in many different ways. Um, and I know that we're gonna, uh, again, go over how you can reach us, um, yes. certainly in crisis, absolutely. Yes. Yep. So, so why don't we tell everybody just one last time. And again, we will put this up on the screen for uh, those who are watching today, but Diane, if you could just give us the, the rundown of the contact info in case those are that are listening so they uh, can understand how to get in touch. If you need immediate help, if you are in crisis, 
uh, call our hotline, which is 315-797-7740. You can call, you can text, or you can go on ywcamv.org and you can chat with us. Also our website again, ywcamv.org. Um, that's where you can link to us in, in a multitude of ways. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing all this with me today. Again, congratulations on your nomination. Uh, Congratulations on being a finalist. And we wish you the best of luck on the 15th. Um, And again, everybody who's watching or listening, that's Tuesday, December 15th from 7 to 8 p.m. on CBS Utica, our 2020 Business of the Year Awards, where you can find out if YWCA is a recipient and you can find out all of our other uh, finalists and find out if they're recipients too. So uh, we hope that you'll join us. It's going to be one hour of just community pride, exciting stuff happening in our community. Uh, It'll be a great feel-good way, in my opinion, to kick off the holidays and just feel really great about this. Uh, amazing business community and amazing organizations that we have in the greater Utica area. So please mark your calendars. Congratulations again, Diane. And we hope, uh, or we wish you the best of luck for the why, not only with this award, but the rest of the year and the future. Um, So congratulations. Thank you so much, Megan. Thank you very much. We appreciate it.